Sir Henry, Henry Barber joins us. Good morning, Henry. How are you, sir? Good morning. Hey, Paul. How are you this morning? Let me clear the throat here. Are you doing okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doing well. Up in Yazoo City, hanging out. Um, I don't even know where we start here. There's so many different things. On Thursday night, when you uh, when she had that so-called interview, I believe it was. Did, wasn't it supposed to be an hour? And and uh, they clipped and pasted. Finally got. I think it was 18 minutes after the whole thing, which was. Uh, <laughs> have you? You mentioned during the uh, d- before we went on the air, you've never seen uh, a situation change so fast. Certainly, uh, pre and post convention, but there are a lot of abnormalities going on here. Your thoughts? Well, <laughs> it, it, we've never seen a presidential race like this. I mean, you know, we yeah. we have a Democrat nominee who didn't have to go through a primary, uh, and which is. It's crazy. Um, and a, a president who was running, who now is not running, and and for good reason. Um, it, but, I, yeah, I've never seen anything change as quickly. When we were in Milwaukee for the Republican convention, uh, there was a, a certain confidence and sense that, you know, Donald Trump was on his way, particularly because I think the attempt on his life seem to have him more focused on issues as opposed to personalities. And it just, I think, put us in a great position to contrast on Trump's success as president in his four years versus the record that Joe Biden had. But I have to give uh, Kamala Harris credit, politically anyway, for really shifting this um, now, has, does she have help from the national media? Of course she does. And the national media uh, helped push Joe Biden out of the White House. Well, not out of the White House, but out of the race. Mm-hmm. And um, But that shouldn't be a surprise to us. We know that, Paul, that you know they are ready. They hate Trump. And uh, they're going to do and are doing everything they can to help Kamala Harris and, I, you know, the CNN interview, I, again, I, 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 I think she performed pretty well, um, but we didn't learn anything about her positions. Uh, Dana Bash asked a few follow-ups, but, yeah. um, it, you know, it was a, a, a fairly easy interview, not like going on with Paul Gallo, that's for sure. Let me, let me say this. Over the years... I, I could take an interview that's thirty minutes, and I if you if you told me make this sound good, and I don't care if you come up with eighteen minutes out of the thirty or the hour, I could do it, and, and most people could for the most part. Either sure. neutralize some of the negatives, or actually make that person sound pretty smart, if I've got the editing privileges, which apparently they had. <laughs> So when you say she sounded, you know, halfway intelligent, uh, that's probably what she is, is halfway intelligent. But the other part of that is this. I, is there anybody in the circle of people that you bounce up against every once in a while or in, that, you, that you meet with or you have a, a business relationship with in politics that actually believe that this thing is coordinated, even back, Henry, to the... Uh, to the debate when Joe Biden had all of this time in the airplane hangar and he was prepped over and over and over and all of a sudden he shows up and some, it almost looked like somebody gave him a Benadryl. He was just, he fell apart. He wasn't ready. Certainly wasn't rested. And there were other people saying, man, if he has a real, real bad appearance on it against Trump, then he's probably going to have to step down. I, I just got to believe, and I'm not a black helicopter kind of guy, but I got to believe this whole thing is planned. Every bit of it's planned. Well, I don't know if that was planned or not, but it looks planned. Um, there's no question that, you know, Biden to have an early debate and to do so poorly when it had to be anticipated by the people around him. I mean, how could they not know that it was going to be a rough night? 
And, and then it, because it was early, it gave them time before the conventions to sort of get this talk about, well, we got to make a change and it. And it happened immediately. The press was on it immediately. We've got to get rid of Biden. We cannot have Trump again. And we just got to make this change. And, uh, uh, Nancy and all the Democrat leaders slowly yes. started pushing. And uh, it if it wasn't a coordinated effort, it looked like a coordinated and, and clearly it became a coordinated effort. There's not any question whether it was pre-planned before the debate, I guess, is the question. Yes. And um, I don't know if it was or it wasn't, but it it's you could certainly make a case. For it, people are that smart. It they, they, that they are way. so smart. And, it, yeah. and it's played to the Democrats' benefit. Well, and the other thing, too, is as soon as Biden stepped down, it was like, okay, is there other, are there other people in the uh, choices out there? Do we go through another process to make that selection? And they didn't let that heat up too much. They just, as soon as it looked like, you know, a couple of other people were going to step in, boom, all of a sudden, uh, without one single solitary vote, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris is the person that uh, is going to run for president. Boom. Yeah, it's unprecedented. I will say I didn't think it was very likely that anybody else would be able to be the nominee. I mean, she's the yeah. vice president. Uh, the African-American support for Democrats, I think, made it very difficult. And all these delegates going to Chicago were were mm -hmm. owned and operated more or less by Biden. And if he was going along with it, um, it just, it seemed very yeah. unlikely there that anybody else could take over. And look, ever since then, Paul, uh, the Democrats are, are, have been on cruise control. And to the point now where nationally, she has a small lead and she's leading in most of the swing states by a very small margin, uh, which makes this debate coming up in a week, September the 10th, really, really important. And Trump, Trump has got to get, get focused on issues. He's got to talk about his record, and he needs to talk about the record of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and how terrible it was, whether you're talking about inflation or the border or crime or weakness abroad. Um, these are the things that Donald Trump needs to focus on. And I would say Kamala Harris needs to um, try to be a candidate who is an agent of change, despite the fact that she's in the in incumbent <laughs> White House. And yes. she needs to go Trump into sort of attacking her personally, because when he does that, it doesn't help. And it especially doesn't help with white women voters yeah. where she's doing very well with. Henry Barber, let me ask you this. From where you sit this morning, do you feel more secure or less secure about the same that they're not going to infuse a lot of illegals into this campaign as far as voting? Do you think the GOP is doing a better job? Do you think that's going to be an issue? And how much of an issue? If she's leaning by 1% in those key states, is that figuring in illegal votes or not? Because they're certainly not polling on the telephone any illegals. Well, and I will say, too, uh, you know, Trump is historically he underperforms in polls than what the reality shows up at, at the, at the polling place. And so I think mm -hmm. that can be uh, helpful to Trump at the, at the end of the day is that, uh, you, you know, that polls don't seem to capture uh, the votes that, that Trump are going to get. Um, I do think Republicans are working hard to make sure that it is a secure election. Um, will we have problems here, there, and yonder? Of course we will. Um, every election has that, and I and I would say it's on both sides. Um, so I don't. I, the, to me, the big thing is is Donald Trump needs to make this about issues. It can't be a referendum on Trump. It needs to be a referendum on who can get the country back on track. And I think Trump needs yep. to 
do you, do you not? Yeah. I've, I've got to ask you about that. Also, another bit of yes. element in here that, that I've got to ask you about is the possibility that Donald Trump will be in an orange uh, jumpsuit in prison. That's one of those stories out there when we come back with Henry Barber in just a moment with more. <laughs> Lance, you know where the Eagles-Packers game is, is going to be played? Uh, I can find that pretty quick, but you, uh, know, the, you know, so yeah. why don't you tell me? Henry, Henry, you know where the Eagles-Packers game is going to be played this weekend? <clears throat> On Sunday. In Brazil. Uh-huh. In Brazil, where they've just <laughs> banned uh, Twitter to the point of saying that they will imprison anybody who's using Twitter. And the Eagles Packers, can you imagine under Trump? I don't think that game would be played there. The Eagles Packers game is going to be played in Brazil. It's, just, it's amazing to me. All right, let me give you this one quick thing because we don't have a lot of time here. Uh, it went viral over the yes. Labor Day weekend. A guy was walking down the street, and I, I think he's a pretty big influencer in, uh, in uh, New York. And he goes by a hotel, and he sees some National Guard people standing outside the hotel. Then he goes by another one. He also sees some National Guard people checking into the hotel. Pretty nice hotel. And it, it piques his curiosity, so he goes into the checkout, and he, and he starts asking questions, to which one of the people in the uniform said, you can't film in here. You must leave. Uh, and that piqued his curiosity. So here's the... Here's the uh, audio that went viral over the weekend. Is the army turning this thing into a migrant shelter? Why are you guys here? It's a hotel. Why is the army at this hotel? Uh, we're here at the request of the state, state of New York. The state of New York has put the army into hotels? What the hell is that about? This is a public hotel, right? What is the army doing in this hotel? Have you guys taken over this hotel? What is? Uh, you so you can't what record. the hell going on? What the f- is the army doing taking over civilian hotels in the middle of New York City? I can't record. So this is what I'm talking about, people. Do you think those guys are there to help you or me? What is going on? Now, the uh, the written part of this is that they feel like there will be some uh, gathering of Trump supporters if he is, is sent to prison. Your thoughts on that? Well... <laughs> I, you know, I see uh, Jack Smith, uh, special counsel, uh, you know, just two months or so before the election has a new indictment to uh, accuse President Trump of trying to steal the election in uh, late uh, 2020, early 2021. Um, I mean, my take on what Jack Smith has done is that it's all politics. Um there is no way they're going to have a trial before November. And he wants to dig all this back up and talk about it. And let's get the focus on January 6th and, and Trump's issues there. Uh, so it seems to me the special counsel is all about politics. Um, I, there's not any chance there will be a trial before then. And certainly no chance that... Uh, Trump would be found guilty or in an orange jumpsuit or anything like that. But he just wants to get the talk right from his perspective. And so our special counsel uh, is clearly wearing his political jersey, in my opinion. Who do you you think is giving him him directions at at all? Or just, I mean, because... Kamala Harris is not. She's nowhere near the Oval Office or in the White House. She's campaigning. And her, her strings are being pulled a thousand different ways. Joe Biden is basically beached. Um, in, the, in the Labor Day weekend stuff that you saw him on audio, he's, he's slurring his words even more now. It, it's really gotten bad. He's an angry old man that's trying to read from the teleprompter and having a lot of mistakes even more than he had before. So uh, you don't think he's in the meetings in the in the Oval Office or the Situation Room? Who the hell's giving Jack Smith these orders, or or is he taking? Is he just on his own? Well, Paul, I don't know. Um, I suspect he's on his own. I'm sure he's got a team of legal people around him. Um, yeah. But what's plain is, from what he's done with this new indictment, is it's about politics, and that's that's the problem with so many of these cases is 
they were about politics. And they are, in essence, interfering with this election cycle. And look, I'm, you know, Trump is not perfect on this on this issue, you know, going back to January 6th. But um, I just, I think Jack Smith looks uh, like he's just totally political and well, trying to Jack influence Smith, this race. Yeah, it, I understand you're talking about the independence of the office, but at that level, when your decisions affect either positively or negatively a national outcome for the presidency of the United States, I don't care if it's Jack Smith or Stacey Abrams, you, you're going to get some feedback from the Oval Office or from the highest command, and, and it, that right now that is not Joe Biden and it's not Kamala Harris.